welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about builder gel and peel base. And if you don't know what builder gel is, I'm going to link a video here of a full tutorial on how to apply builder gel. And I go on about it a little bit in the video, but I've gotten a lot of requests for this video. Um, if you don't know, I did a dip powder and peel base video last December and it's a very popular video, but a lot of people know that I've gone away from the clear or translucent dip powder as my base, and I've transitioned to builder gel as my base instead. And there's a few reasons for that. The main reason is because builder gel, because of what I use, this protein bond from Young Nails, builder gel doesn't lift on my nails the way that clear dip powder or translucent dip powder usually does. This one lasts me so much longer. And while it can take a little longer to apply Builder Gel the first time on your nails, the maintenance of it is so much easier than clear dip powder. Doing a fill on Builder Gel is super duper easy, hardly any lifting, like the upkeep is so freaking easy. I can actually go about two weeks without doing a fill before I'm like, oh, okay, there's some growth, let me do a fill on this. The video is going to be broken up into four parts. The first part is going to be how to apply your builder gel. The second part is going to be how to apply peel base over builder gel. And then I do a small snippet on dipping right over that. The third part is going to be how to pop off your dip over the peel base. And the fourth part is how to do a fill with builder gel. So all the time codes are going to be listed below. So if you want to skip forward to a very specific part, you just have to click on the time code and it'll automatically fast forward you to that part. So you don't have to sit through or fast forward the video the whole time. So without further ado, let's get started. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using my middle finger to put the builder gel on. To start, I'm putting two thin layers of this protein bond onto my nail. It is an optional product to use, but I absolutely recommend it if you're someone who struggles with lifting. This ensures that the builder gel does not lift on your nail at all. It is amazing. It's a small bottle, but a little goes a long way and it lasts for a long time. I'm applying my second layer right now, and then I'm going to move on once it's a little bit dry and put on my gel base. So before putting on your builder gel, I absolutely recommend putting on a thin layer of gel base and curing that in your LED lamp or UV lamp for 60 seconds. When it's done curing, you're able to move on to the builder gel application. So this is how thin my nails are right now. I'm going to use my triple D builder gel brush. This is a size six gel brush and it is small enough for me to apply the builder gel and like it's just an amazing size. Anyway, so I have a video I did for triple D on tips and tricks if you want to watch that for builder gel but I just drag my brush across the top of the container and then I tap it on the side when I want the builder gel string to detach. So it's kind of difficult to show you guys from this angle, but I have the bead of builder gel and I just place it on my nail and then I start spreading it over my nail bed in a like padding motion. And then if I realize there's not enough builder gel to cover the entire nail, I go back in my pot for another bead. When you're done applying the builder gel and you're happy with the layer, cure it in your LED or UV lamp for 60 seconds. And when it's done, you take it out of the lamp and you're actually going to have a sticky layer on your nail. So you need to remove that sticky layer. I take a lint-free wipe with rubbing alcohol and I just gently just wipe my nail and then what do you know, the sticky layer is gone and my nail is nice and glossy. 
The next part is optional, but if for any reason you decide that your nail turned out lumpy, bumpy, or it's too thick, you can still fix it. Um, so if I decide, like for example, this thumb is too thick, I'm going to take a hand file, or you can use a drill, whatever you choose, and I'm going to remove the shine off of my nail and really just shape it and buff it into the shape that I want. So this is assuming that you just messed up your builder gel application. Don't worry, you don't have to take it all off. Just file, shape, and buff the builder gel into the shape that you want. When you are done, dust everything off. Wipe your nails with rubbing alcohol to get rid of any excess dust. Hey, wash your hands if you want to. And then you're going to take a gel top coat and put it over your nail and cure it for 60 seconds. So you wanna get that glossy look back. I know that you can put peel base over like the buffed surface of builder gel, but when it comes to popping off, you want that glossy surface which this is a tip for dip powder um, users who use the dip powder method with peel base. Put on top coat before you do your peel base. All right, I think the million dollar question is how many layers of peel base do you apply to your nail? It really depends on how easy you want it to pop off or how difficult you want it to pop off. And every single person is different because the pressure that you use to apply the, the liquid to your nail is different than mine. How much liquid you have on your brush is different than mine. The temperature in your room and the rate that the peel base dries is different than mine. So it's different for every single person. I personally like to use two full layers, but I know some people keep the entire perimeter clean and free of peel base so that it doesn't pop off or lift and some people like to do just a strip down the middle. I do two full layers so that this can pop off whenever the hell I want to. When it's time to dip you want your peel base to be completely dry. You don't want it to like have some tacky edges or anything like completely dry to the touch because if it's not completely dry and your base bond brush touches it you've contaminated your base bond brush and then you've just gone down this rabbit hole of trying to salvage your base bond which we all know that liquid is not cheap and it's not like if you have your favorite brand you don't want to ruin it so anyways i am just doing a pour over method here but it's completely optional you don't have to pour over you can actually dip into the jar i just decided hey i wanted to show it off this way so hang out, watch me dip, or fast forward to the next part. As for removal, I've learned a few things along the way, and my first trick is cuticle oil. You can use any oil you have, but apply cuticle oil to your nails because it's going to make removal so much easier. Anyways, this nail, I was very lucky because there was like some lifting on the side 
and I was able to just wedge my nail in between and be like pop 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 but not all nails are like that some require a little extra force so I'm going to show you how this one required a little extra force at the tip of the nail and then my other nail on my index actually it just it wasn't as easy to come off as this one so some of them don't have any lifting and in order to get it to expose the sides you need to take a hand file or a drill and you need to just file the sides to expose the layer of peel base to dip so that's what i'm doing here i was like oh i can't find a free edge to wedge my cuticle pusher in so i filed the sides around the cuticle the free edge and then i take this tool and i'm like okay get up in there and start popping off so if you notice that some is really really stuck sometimes you have to just use different tools find the tool that you feel most comfortable popping your nails off with sometimes i need cuticle nippers in order to get them off sometimes my fingernail does the job sometimes i can use a cuticle pusher but it really just depends on your personal preference there's no right or wrong just be very careful and make sure you don't get the builder gel so you don't want to accidentally wedge any of these tools under the builder gel and start lifting the builder gel from your nail that's a big no-no it's better to go slow and steady and be more cautious than accidentally mess it up so it is time to do a fill and this area that i'm pointing at here there's actually no product on there there's no gel it is growth and i need to fill in that area with product which is why this is called a fill sometimes you'll experience lifting in some of these areas sometimes you won't um, but if there is lifting you need to remove it so what i actually do is i take a ball bit and I put it on my drill and then I start drilling these areas around my cuticle very gently, very light pressure. And if there's any lifting, it starts exposing itself at this process. If it does start exposing itself, you have to remove all of that lifting before you do a fill. I'm very fortunate that Builder Gel hardly lifts on me. So this isn't a tedious process for me. It's very, very quick. And this is why I love Builder Gel over Clear Dip, because the maintenance is so much easier. When I'm done, I dust it all off, I sanitize it with rubbing alcohol, and then I have to take my hand file, or you can use a drill, my hand file, and I remove the shine from all of my nails. So I'm trying to not only just remove the shine, but remove as much bulk as possible, because when I do my fill, I am adding a little bit more builder gel on top of the builder gel that I already have on there. So I want to make sure that that bulk is just going down. As always, I use alcohol. You can get these little pouches or put it in a pump bottle or a spray bottle, whatever your pick your poison <laughs> whatever your poison is just do it um i like the spray so much easier while i'm doing my nails like this and then i take a lint-free wipe and i sanitize it off and just like i did in the very beginning of this video protein bond this is liquid gold for your nails when using builder gel so i take this and i apply it around my cuticle area just the exposed area where my like my natural nail bed is i don't have to do it over the entire nail but if you choose to go ahead do what you want it's not going to hurt your nail if you do that whatever you do just make sure you don't get it directly on your skin um, exposure of this to your skin prolonged exposure is probably not a good thing prolonged exposure of any chemical to your skin is not a good thing then you're going to take your gel base and you're going to apply a nice thin layer over the entire nail, not just the area where your natural nail is, over the entire nail. And then cure that in your lamp. In my lamp, I do it for 60 seconds. Now that looks gorgeous, nice and shiny, but it's time to go in and apply a thin layer of builder gel to fill in that area where your growth happened. So as I did it before in the beginning of the video, I'm using my Triple D gel brush. It is a size six brush and it's just a very nice small size and lets me get very close to my cuticle area. So I take this and I just glide the brush across the top of the gel, builder gel that is, and then 
tap it on the edges to remove the string and then I just apply it around the entire cuticle area and then I'll fan it out downwards towards the free edge. So I focus in the beginning on my cuticle area to make sure I have a nice even application around that area where the fill needs to happen and just work on it going downwards to the free edge. When you're happy with the overall application, this is just a tip. Flip your finger upside down for 15 to 30 seconds and the Builder Gel, this brand specifically, will automatically start forming an apex. So it kind of like pools in the middle. Um, it's not so noticeable right here because I didn't apply a super thick layer. Then you cure your Builder Gel in your lamp for 60 seconds. And then when you're done, it's completely cured. You can go ahead and apply more Builder Gel if you want a thicker layer. Or you can do what I'm doing here and take rubbing alcohol and just do a nice swipe to remove the sticky, tacky layer and expose the gorgeous, glossy nail. And then you can go on back to the peel base application. Like literally, you can apply peel base to this and just start dipping. All right, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch that. I know that it's very, very similar to my dip powder and peel base video where I did a layer of clear dip powder, peel base on top of that, and then I dipped on top. But a lot of people still requested it, even though I tried to explain like, oh, all you have to do is your builder gel and put peel base on top of it and you're good to go. Um, so it's very, 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 very similar to that, except for obviously applying builder gel is a completely different ball game. So if you guys have tried this and you love it, please let me know in the comments below if you have any recommendations on how you would tweak or change your routine or if you do anything different with your builder gel and your peel base, let me know. I would love to know because like I'm always like fine tuning and finicking with my routine to find the perfect way to do it for me that works the best. So, all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you like this and be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more videos coming.